Welcome back to uh, Good Morning San Diego. So we were talking about this. Uh, we've been talking about it. Developers of a project to revitalize Seaport Village had to kind of switch things up after discovering an earthquake fault line that runs right through the old project. So here to talk more about this redesign and what it can mean for the future is CEO of the construction company Gafcon, Yehudi Gaffin. Gaff, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you Thank for you. coming in. Okay, so I know a lot, a lot of people are interested in this project because it is really, you know, as, as our friends from the port always say, it is going to be the entrance to San Diego. It is going to be kind of a jewel of our community. What did you think when your plan got a little derailed by a fault line? To be frank, we expected it. I think any project of this nature and scale uh, changes over time, and this won't be the last change. I keep telling people a project, this isn't a project, it's really a program. It's multiple projects within a new district for San Diego, and as these projects develop, as we discover new things, as we have new opportunities to bring to the project, uh, we have to change it. Mm -hmm. We're actually working on an interim plan, hopefully that'll test certain aspects of it and it'll change. The one commitment we've made to the public and the port is that the general program will stay intact. So the program that we submitted back in 2016 will still be there. So that program includes the spire, Correct. right? The big, you know, beautiful spire with a kind of, what, a restaurant on top? Is that what the idea is, perhaps? An event center. An event center. Correct. Um, it also, an education center Correct. in connection with with our with our aquarium and, and all that other. Correct. Alert, we call it a learning, learning center. center. It's it's going to be really under Scripps Institute of Oceanography, Wonderful. focused on our ocean and the blue economy. Uh, three types of hotels, hospitality, a hostel, a micro hotel, and a full service hotel. And we're actually looking at a five star to be there. So it's really going to provide a diverse uh, opportunity for uh, affordable hospitality on right. the waterfront, not only high end. Okay, so I was I was reading through your report here that that you presented to the to the uh, to the Port Commission, and and I found that very interesting. The the different levels of hostel, you know, price points to stay there because the idea is, and you guys always had said this throughout, the idea was to bring the waterfront to the people. Exactly. And so are there any other amenities like that to allow for the community to be one with the water? Yeah. So we believe strongly in a triple bottom line and that's, uh, you know, obviously profit. The project has to make sense, but it's also about people and community and it's also about conservation and education. So the, um, the school and the waterfront is really to bring the people to bring both the community to the to the com to the uh, community and the water, we're working very closely with the fishermen. San Diego used to be the heart and the, of of the American tuna fishing industry, mm -hmm. so we're really trying to revitalize the fishing industry. The water is our front door. It's what makes this project unique. It's what gives us a very special, authentic place, mm -hmm. and we're really trying to showcase that. Yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit more though about what has also changed in the original proposal that came forward and was approved. Um, parking is less of a focus than it was before, and retail space also less of a focus. Why? You've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so in our studies, we found that the original amount of retail was a little overstated. We had about close to 400,000 feet of retail. Mm -hmm. It's now about 280,000 feet of Why? retail. Uh, two reasons. One was, as we did our underground investigation, you, you mentioned earlier that there was a fault. Mm -hmm. We found some utilities. So the actual public space increased, which decreased the amount of footprint of buildings, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, two is our research showed that that 250 to 300,000 feet was the sweet spot for retail in the project. Mm -hmm. On the office space, which increased, um, we have found new opportunities in the blue economy. I'm working in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and there's a tremendous amount of interest in the blue economy in industries that need to be close to the water for various reasons. And uh, there seems to be a, a large demand for that type of office space on right. the water, and it's the only office space that can be done under the state lands doctrine. 
and, and I think parking. we and parking we all know that parking is in a tremendous state of flux I think with uh, with uh, ride share and autonomous vehicles the demand for parking started to decrease we're actually seeing it and was reported recently in the mm -hmm. newspapers so we are actually right in the middle of that change that's happening so we're actually starting to look at that we believe that before this project opens there'll probably be a very large decrease in demand for parking and more of an increase in in ride share and, mm -hmm. and uh, offloading at projects like ours. You know when we talk about an earthquake fault line going right through kind of that right through that piece of property um, and you, you you add a spire that's going to be very tall you know a la the Seattle you know needle do you have any kind of concern? I mean, do you do you start to get nervous when you think, well, maybe there's a huge spire on a fault line? Might not be the best idea. No, really not. <laughs> I think we all live in San Diego. We okay. live on uh, what they call the Ring of Fire, which is this uh, Pacific Rim plate mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. San Diego is crisscrossed by faults. There, we lived through a number of earthquakes over the last decades. We'll live through more. The good thing is that engineering has really improved. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot from Northridge and the other recent earthquakes. And I think our design team is very focused on making sure that this project is designed designed to deal with earthquakes right. so it's like a hurricane if you design for the hurricane you're not going to have any damage but unfortunately some of the older structures were not designed for it but I think we're in an era now where engineering is caught up we are under performance based design criteria so I'm not concerned at all okay. I think uh, we'll design for it you know you mentioned something and and this is what I will close on um, because the port board still needs to you know finally approve all of this once all of your planning and research and, and and, you know, I know you brought in a CBRE to come in and look at the site and, and determine what you really need there, what, what the, the community demands. So before the port votes, how many more iterations of this project do you anticipate? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> I, I know there will be at least one more iteration wow. as we go through this, and there could be more. But again, our commitment is keep the program intact. As new opportunities uh, present themselves, we'll deal with them and integrate them into the project. Well, it has been lovely to speak with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Thanks for having us. Of course, and, and please come back and keep us updated we'll with all that. these design changes. We'll do that. All right.